This video is sponsored by all of the people who said they really liked this shirt. I'm wearing it again just for y'all. Hello my lovely friends, it's Margaret and it's time to nerd out about books. Specifically, we're going to be nerding out about the books that I want to read in 2019. Not all of them because obviously I read 123 books last year. I'm not going to give you a video where you have to listen to me talk about 123 books all at the same time. You don't want to sit through that. I don't want to have to hold up all of those books. But there are 12 books that I specifically narrowed down and I was like, you know what? I need to read these books. Six of them are 2018 releases that I just like have been hearing so many things about, I am hyped about, and I just didn't have time to get to them in 2018, but I want to get to them in 2019. And then six of them are backlist books that I have been meaning to read for years, and I was like, you know what? This is the year. I will also have a video coming at you guys where I will talk about all of the series that I either want to start or finish in 2019, and then I have another video coming about all of the books that I want to reread in 2019. So without further ado, let's talk about some books. I am going to start out with the 2018 releases just because those will be fresh in everyone's memory, but the first one that I want to talk about is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. You might have noticed that the sequel to this series came out in January. Uh, if I had been on truly on top of my game, I would have already read this book so I could read that because I love Maureen Johnson as a person and the one book of hers that I have read, I have really enjoyed. It is a YA mystery about Stevie Bell who's going to Ellingham Academy. And so the thing about Ellingham Academy, there are two things about it actually. And the first thing is that it's one of those schools where kids can kind of pursue their specific passion and that's really encouraged. But the other thing about it is that when it was founded in the, about the 1930s, the founder's wife and daughter went missing, left only with like a ransom note or a murder note or something like that, signed by Truly Devious. And if you were going to say, oh, I bet Truly Devious has popped up again in the present day with Stevie, you would be right. It just sounds like something I would really enjoy. I love hearing Maureen talk about the series, so I need to get to this series. The next book on this list is also a YA mystery. It's been making the rounds on booktube, and that is Sadie by Courtney Summer. It's about a girl traveling across the country trying to find the person who murdered her sister, and a guy doing a podcast tracking the girl who is looking for the murderer. It's obviously about Sadie, the the titular character, kind of like Durf. I have heard that this is the best way to listen to this is to listen to the audiobook, and I love me some audiobooks, so definitely am going to hit this up at some point this year. I hear it's very uh, dark and very, very heavy, so trigger warnings for like all kinds of things. Do your research before you read this book, um, especially considering like I believe sexual assault and pedophilia. But from what I understand and from what people have been saying is that it's stuff that's mentioned and not necessarily like glorified in this series because you know sometimes like the murder it can be objectified and, and be gross. I hear that it is handled in a very like discreet and respectful manner in this series or in this book, it's a standalone. The next book on this list is A Very Large Expensive Sea by Tahera Mafi. I have read her Shatter Me series. I was not the biggest fan of Shatter Me. Um, it just went in a way that I didn't appreciate, but I still want to read her writing because people who love her, they've been saying, like, raving about this. This is a YA contemporary. It's about Shirin. She is a young Muslim girl living in New York in the year after 9-11, and it's basically about her navigating, like, the hatred that cropped up as a result of those attacks. She likes to break dance, and she's a loner, so she's got this big old wall built up between her and the rest of the people because she's so used to people, like, attacking her and, and being uh, hostile towards her. And then she meets a boy who kind of starts to break down the barriers. And listen, I, I am such a sucker for girls who have like these big, thick walls and they meet a boy who starts to kind of pull them out of their shell. I'm such a sucker for that. If you, you can't see it, but I've got Emma Swan and Kaylee and Jones up, up top there somewhere. I just love that storyline. So obviously this could be a very good book for me. Moving on in the list, the next book that I want to read is Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is an adult dystopian and honestly you had me at dystopian because when I find a world or like a plot line or a particular type of story that I like, like I will eat up all of it. I don't get tired. Of it. This is about Maggie Hosky. She's living in this dystopian world and she is a monster hunter. If dystopian didn't hook you, a monster hunter really should. She is looking for a missing girl and in the process of looking for this missing girl, she discovers that these monsters that are living in her world, uh, there's, there's a lot more going on there and it is much worse than they thought it was. Uh, I'm assuming the survival of humanity is at stake because it usually is in dystopians. The next book on this list is Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. I have loved so far the Talon series. Now I haven't read the last book so there's a chance that it could all go very wrong for me. It, there is a chance. But I did love the Talon series. I really love her writing so I 
immediately was like, yes, I would love to read this book about her. And then I started reading the plot. And the plot sounds very similar to one of my favorite anime, which is Inuyasha. It is about Yumiko, and she is half yukai, half human. She was raised in this temple, and the, the temple is there to guard pieces of this scroll that can be put together to summon the great Kami dragon for one wish. And then the temple is attacked, the priests are murdered, and she ends up running with this piece of the scroll. And I believe she runs into someone who wants her piece of the scroll, but she needs the rest of the scroll for some reason because the world is a mess and things are happening. I'm not entirely sure. I just heard the setup and I heard that it's two people who are at odds who are going to have to work together and possibly fall in love. And again, if you're on this channel, you know that's my thing. The last of the 2018 releases that I want to read is Fox by Nadine Brandis. This is a magical retelling of the gunpowder plot that happened, like when you hear Remember, Remember the 5th of November, like if you know that, that's the, uh, the stuff that's happening. Um, but basically there's a magic system in this based on different colors and there are masks and the main character Thomas is slowly being taken over by this thing called the stone play. We're in this king versus the people world which that, that was England back then. So supposedly in order to survive and like stop this plague that is attacking him somehow for some reason he has to kill the king. This sounds fascinating. She is also coming out next year or this year with a retelling of Anastasia and called Romanoff, and I, I'm just, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for the historical retellings with magical twists that make history better, because I loved My Lady Jane, and My Lady Jane did that. Moving on to the backlist book. So from what I understand, like anything from 2017 or before that is what I understand is as backlist, so that's how I am going with this. The first one that I want to read is a YA contemporary, and that is Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. I have heard nothing but good things about this series. Like, everyone loves it. It's about Eliza who has this webcomic, but nobody actually knows that she writes this webcomic, uh, but it is super popular. Things are fine, and then the most popular fanfic writer for her webcomic transfers to her high school. Hijinks ensue and she's trying to, like, she's getting closer to this this boy that writes fanfic for her webcomic and trying not to, like, give on that she is the person that writes it and that he's, like, her, her literal biggest fan. It came out in 2017 and I wasn't on booktube at that point, so I just kind of missed it, didn't even know it existed until this last year. The next one is also another 27 release, and that is An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. First off, her name is Margaret, so obviously I had to read it. I'm really into this whole fairies versus humans thing. If you couldn't tell by the fact that I love both Akatar and the Cruel Prince, it's about Isabel, and she paints portraits for the Fae, because I guess the Fae can't create their own portraits, and she makes the mistake of painting human sorrow in this prince's eyes. And because she has done that, it is, like, that's considered, a, 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 it's just a grave sin, because number one, it could end up very poorly for him if anyone sees any sort of weakness in him. And so she's taken back to the Fey realms to be punished and live with, in this prince's court, I am assuming. I'm assuming it's a kind of like an Akatar type scenario. Uh, only maybe better than Akatar because we know how that ended. She starts to sort of fall in love with someone she shouldn't be falling in love with. So, first mistake, painting human sorrow in the prince's eyes. Second mistake, possibly falling in love with the prince. I'm not entirely sure if it's the prince, but I'm guessing it's the prince. The next one that I am going to try and read is yet another 2017 release. A lot of 2017 releases coming on here, and that is Geekerella by Ashley Poston. It's a retelling of Cinderella. I love retellings. I love Cinderella, so I want to reread this. Um, it's apparently a nerdy retelling of Cinderella because the main character, Elle, is a fan of this show. Don't remember the name of the show. It's not important, but they are doing like a big convention, and she wants to go to this big convention, and they're also doing a movie in, in there, and she ends up meeting one of the actors that's playing the prince in this kind of fairy tale sci-fi show type thing uh, and there's romance right up Margaret's alley. The next book on the list is Scythe by Neil Shusterman. This is about Citra and Rowan and they are living in a world where everything that could cause a human to die has been conquered and eradicated and so there's no disease, there's no murder, there's none of that stuff. To keep the human population from getting out of control there are these beings called Scythes and it's the Scythes job to just basically go through the population and take out a certain number of people. They are the only people that can kill people. Uh, they are the only way people die. And so both of them end up being brought in to be apprenticed as scythes, but unfortunately, only one of them can become a scythe, and in order to become a scythe, it's gonna end in one of them killing the other. So that sounds awkward, and I hear there, there might be a little bit of a forbidden romance. Can you tell? That's that's a buzzword for me. The next book that I want to read is A City of Brass by S.A. Chakabordi. Hold on, let's you, you got to see this cover, and the, the light is doing weird things because this is a library book. There we go. 
All right, can you, can you see the gorgeousness that is this cover? Um, this is about Nahri. She is a con woman living in 18th century Cairo. Yes, 18th century Cairo. And she accidentally, she doesn't believe in magic, but then she accidentally gets drawn into the world of the jinn and embroiled in the court politics of said jinn. She's in trouble, clearly. I... A lot of the people that I, I love and follow have really enjoyed this book. It sounds fascinating. It's kind of like a historical fantasy, so I'm all over that. It sounds really good, and it has a pretty cover. So obviously, why would you not want to read a book that has this cover? Like, does that just not give you serious cover envy? I don't even have a book at this point, but I want a book that has a cover this pretty. The final book on this list is not going to surprise anyone once you see what it is, but that is The Language of Thorns by Leigh Bardugo. This is a book of fairy tales that Leigh Bardugo has written set in the Grisha universe, and I love the Grisha universe. The Six of Crows duology was my favorite thing to read last year. Like, I loved it. I reread Six of Crows twice, and I'm fixing to reread it again. I'm going to re be rereading Crooked Kingdom here soon, too. I don't know all that much about what goes on in here because they're just separate fairy tales, but one of the things I really do like, let me see if I can do this right, but if you look, can you see how it's kind of, yes, it has illustrations that go around and they build to make one, is this spoilery looking? They build to make one final illustration at the very end. Um, I just, I think this is such a cool idea to have, to create fairy tales for a world that you created. So from what I understand, like there's no like direct correlations, but you can see little bits and pieces from fairy tales that we would be familiar with. Um, but yes, look at this. It's the, 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 the gorgeous cover. The cover is gorgeous, um, and I'm ready for it. I need all of the Grishaverse that I can get, and it's going to be a while because I've got this book and I've got King of Scars and possibly the Netflix series if it comes out this year. Uh, but other than that, I have to wait until the next King of Scars book comes out. It's okay, everything's fine. So those are 12 books that I am going to try and read in 2019. Uh, sometime at the end of the year, we're gonna revisit that list and see if I actually did read those books. We'll see, it might happen, it might not happen. Who knows what this year will bring? This is by no means an exhaustive list. There are other books that I have been meaning to start forever and that I'm going to be getting to, but like these are the 12 that I'm like, let's prioritize these because I need more of them in my life. Let me know in the comments, what is one book that you've kind of been putting off or you just haven't had a chance to get to that you really, really want to read? Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, hit that subscribe button. I make videos two to three times a week about books and writing, and I would love to see your lovely face here on a regular basis. If you want more of me, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter. Those are both at the word nerd with a three in a nerd instead of the E. That is it for now, my friends. Happy reading, and I will see you later when we will talk about more wordy, nerdy things. Bye!